this many people showed up on Sundays, it would be awesome. <laughs> so I'm a minister. That means I went to this thing called seminary, which is basically like going to Hogwarts. And I think the real reason that I'm here is to go change all that coffee into wine afterwards and celebrate what a great night it's been here. But all jokes aside, I, I do love my job and the work that I get to do. To be led into people's lives, to, to mourn with them, to celebrate with them. To be in a community that explores important things like faith and spirituality. To talk about what it means to be truly human and to be a part of this world is an amazing and a beautiful thing. But I didn't always want to be a minister. You don't grow up at five wanting to do this. At first I wanted to be a garbage man. And then I switched up to wanting to be a superhero. But to truly be a hero, you need to have a villain. You need to have someone you fight, the bad guy, the arch nemesis. You need the enemy. And now convention would tell us that enemies are easy to spot. They're the people who are generally wearing the black hat. But the things that I've learned, and maybe you guys have had similar experiences, is that our world is full of enemies and we do have them. But the thing is, the enemies we run up against on a daily basis, they don't wear, really wear the black hats. Instead, the enemies that we usually run up against are wearing costumes comprised of labels. Labels given them to them by us, our culture and the world around us. Labels which categorize and define, determine value and worth, which split up and divide, creating this world of us versus them. And these are from the labels that we carelessly throw around like idiots, loser, nerd, conservative, and liberal to labels which have drawn lines in the sand so deep we wonder if they'll ever be erased. Fat, black, poor, fag, homeless, slut, retard, failure, the list goes on and on. Each one has a big finger pointing with it. And from what I've experienced, this has a huge impact on the world around us. It shapes how we see it, it shapes how we interact with it. And because we wear these labels too, it shapes how we see and understand ourselves. See, the thing is, enemy isn't just a word we save for the movies. The reality is, it's in our stories, in our world, and they're saturated with it. And these labels split us up better than any walls or fences ever could. And for those of us who have worn more than one of these labels, we know what it's like to be on the other side of that wall. We know what it's like to be attacked, left out, marginalized. We know what it's like to long for something different. And it probably don't have to go out on a limb to say that we've all longed for something different. At some time or another, we've all asked a question, does it need to be this way? Does it have to be like this? And those are good questions. And they're good questions because they're questions of hope. Ones that we must ask because it doesn't have to be this way and we know we don't have to live like this. And I'm not here to preach at you, that's not really what I'm about today, but I'll, I'll share my thoughts on, on where we can find that hope, on how we can go down a different road together to a place where labels aren't how we relate to each other and a world that's maybe a bit more open, inclusive, and one where everybody has their place. See, once a long time ago, there was a guy, a guy who thought it would be a good idea that maybe we could love our enemies, and maybe that's how we can get to that world. Loving our enemies. I mean, that seems like a pretty counterintuitive, crazy idea. But maybe we need crazy to help get us down that road and towards that world that we all long for. Because here's the thing. What if the problem is that we don't really see each other anymore? All we see is the labels that we've given each other. And what if this call to love our enemies is to see each other as humans? Maybe lost and broken and fucked up, but still human nevertheless. See, you can't love someone unless you can actually see them. And it's hard to see someone as the enemy when all you see is their humanity. And my job has let me see this in action, to witness people beginning to see each other, of walls coming down, of people coming together even though the world has split them apart. And I'd like to share some stories with you of some people that I've met. So first up is these two guys I met in Montreal. One is a separatist, the other is a federalist, and they do not get along. But one day they ran into each other at the hospital when both their daughters were diagnosed with eating disorders. And for the first time they actually saw each other as, as humans, as dads, and they cried together, they supported each other, and now they're good friends, they just don't talk about politics. <laughs> These guys always had their lunch stolen by the school bully. 
Uh, but we learn that the, the bully's mom never, ever packed him a lunch. And he was jealous of the lunch that their dads would pack him. And hearing that, they stopped seeing him as the bully and actually saw him as just a sad and lonely kid. And they said that actually helped them stop hating him. This is Tim. Uh, when Tim was growing up in the Deep South, he was taught that gays are the enemies. But when his best friend came out, he had to reconcile friend and enemy. And he went through this crazy transformation story and now actually helps churches build healthy and positive relationships with the LGBT community. And then we have the story whenever we look in one of these things. We each have this story, don't we? And for the longest time, I was my own worst enemy, believing the labels that people put on me. And it's taken me a long time to see past them. And if we need proof that labels do hurt and divide, all we need to look is in the mirror and know that our own stories. So maybe there is something to this loving your enemies thing. Maybe another kind of world is possible. Maybe all we need to do is step out and proclaim as people have done before and say, no, it does not need to be like this. We don't need to live like this. And in this world that runs on labels and divisions, maybe love is that wrench that we need. Idealistic? Sure, but what else do you call striving for the kind of world where everybody has a place and everybody is included? And maybe it's just crazy enough to work. It certainly worked in those stories. And maybe it worked on your own stories. And maybe our lives are the proof that we can do something different. So what do we do? We love. We peel back the labels, we see each other. Is it easy? No, of course not. But is it worth it? Hell yeah. And that is when we all say amen to that. Thank you. Thank you.